Hi, I'm John Cleland from the University of Glasgow. Well, I think uh, the big highlight, uh, of course, are the guidelines, and the guidelines have given us the foundational four, as they're being talked about. So we have the, uh, the RAS inhibitors, the ACE and uh, ARNIs, uh, the beta blockers, the MRAs, uh, and now the SGLT2 inhibitors. Um, and so, and that's solid. Uh, what's interesting is how the picture is evolving for HEF MREF and HEF, uh, what I'm calling HEF NEF. Uh, we have a new uh, phenotype also called HEF SNEF, which is becoming very interesting. So HEF PEF now encompasses everything from basically 40% right to the top, but now into these three segments. Uh, um, just to say a little bit about this new entity, HEF SNEF. Uh, it seems to be genetically different. It, 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 these are patients with an ejection fraction above 70%. They seem to have a bad prognosis. Uh, there may be hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and, and, and other diseases in there. And, and it looks already as though we might have uh, a new treatment for them, which are cardiac myosin inhibitors. Uh, so being developed for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, but might also be uh, developed uh, for this uh, population. So that, that's quite exciting and of course uh, the way that we're, I think we're going to beat hef -PEF is by chopping up into bite-sized chunks, uh, winning the war one battle at a time as it were. And we've got amyloid disease, uh, so we've got tafamidus and the, the various treatments for TTR amyloid. Uh, we've got rivaroxaban low dose uh, for the patients with hef -PEF and coronary artery disease, striking reductions in mortality, and I don't know why we're not talking more about that. Uh, and then we're, now we've got the SGLT2 inhibitors, which seem to be effective, certainly for hef MREF and hef NEF. Not quite so sure about hef SNEF. We need a bit more information uh, on their efficacy for, for that population. Um, We've got a little bit of news about the DELIVER study. Of course, the Emperor Preserve study is the one that's uh, been the first of these SGLT2 inhibitors that's shown benefit in this upper range uh, ejection fraction group. But now we have the DELIVER study, which has indicated that it, it's also positive. We are expecting that that's mainly going to be driven by a reduction in heart failure hospitalizations and hopefully an improvement in quality of life, which is very important for this population not expecting to see a reduction in mortality but who knows we might get lucky um, what else is out there uh, the diamond study with uh, uh, pteromer uh, showing that we can get better control of hyperkalemia which might allow us to facilitate the use and implement uh, target doses of ras inhibitors and mras um, what else is out there uh, new information, uh, particularly on CRTP, a new meta-analysis in the, uh, the European Journal of Heart Failure, combining the companion and KRHF data, showing striking benefits of the uh, CRTP without the defibrillator, so just nice confirmatory data. Uh, a lot of interest in atrial septal devices for hef -PEF. Uh, the, the, the large study, the reduced uh, LAP2 uh, study, neutral on its primary outcome, but there does seem to be a large subset of the population who may benefit, and they're uh, encouraged enough to go forward with uh, confirmatory trials to, uh, to ensure that what we're seeing is not down to our imagination, but is actually can be, uh, we can reproduce that.